Hey everybody, Travis here from Travis.media. In this video, I want to give you five tips to help you continue moving forward as a web developer in 2020. Stay tuned. Here's the situation. We got goat number one, goat two, and goat three. The plot, 25 cents for the fancy food that they're not used to. And what happens is your kids are like, Dad, give me 25 cents. But you don't have 25 cents. What do you do? Here's the lesson. Don't pay 25 cents for the fancy food. Instead, walk a couple feet over from the cage. Find some grass growing around the cage. Look at that. Take it, bolt, get it all together, fold it up. Look at this. They pull really hard. See? Free grass, expensive feed. All right, so as always, if you're into web development, coding, freelancing, anything like that, consider hitting that subscribe button below. If you don't know enough about me yet, be sure to check out some videos, some other videos, and see if this channel is for you. All right, so as I stated at the beginning, I have five quick tips for you today as you head into the year 2020 to help you continue moving forward, not backwards, in 2020, to help you succeed, to help you meet your goals. Here are my five tips to you. Number one, get crystal clear about your goals this year and do it as soon as possible. The sooner the better. So what are you looking to achieve this year? What are your goals? You want to get that full-time dev job? You want to step out as a freelancer this year? You want to get AWS certified? Maybe you want to get better at something like React? What are your goals? What do you want to achieve this year? Whatever it is, you got to write them down and you got to put some action behind them. In other words, you got to create some goals. And regarding goals, here's a couple guidelines. Number one, don't set too many goals. Try to keep it like under seven. Uh, you set too many, you're going to set yourself up for failure. Number two, take each goal through the SMARTER checklist. Okay, that's an acronym. Um, I'll put a link below. For me, I don't like acronyms too much. I don't like to have to sit down and work through so much stuff. So let me just sum it up for you. Be sure that your goals are specific. Make sure they are actionable and make sure you can measure them. That's the main thing. So for me, I want to grow my YouTube channel this year. If I make a goal like, this year I want to grow my YouTube channel. It's not specific. I can't measure it. It's not, it's not a good goal. What's better than that is to say, I want to grow my YouTube channel this year to 50,000 subscribers. Then I have a number. I have a little more specifics there and I can decide how can I reach 50,000. But even better than that, I should say, I want to grow my YouTube channel to 50,000 subscribers this year by posting once a week on YouTube, blogging twice a week, and posting regularly to social media. That's some actions behind this goal. So that's what I mean. Get specific about your goals. Um, put some action behind them. Like, I'm going to post once a week. I'm going to do social media, whatever it is. Just get specific about your goals. And the last guideline I would give is don't get bogged down about dates. If you hadn't noticed, January 1st has passed. Also, it happened on a Wednesday, so people are like, oops, I didn't have my plan together by January 1st. Well, so what? Just start the next Monday. Well, this video is probably gonna be released after that. What if you didn't do it yet? Well, just start the next Monday. Just start sometime in January. Don't get bogged down about dates. All right, now back to the tips. Number two, this year, get out of the learning bubble. Now, learning is great. As a web developer, as a programmer, software developer, whatever you call yourself, you gotta keep learning. It's a changing field, so learning is a good thing. But I think a lot of people find that learning bubble safe, okay? As long as I'm taking courses on Udemy or Skillshare or on YouTube or something, I'm learning, that gives me an excuse to not have to step out and, and really do something with all of this information. So you hear a lot of people say, once I get really comfortable with React, then I'm gonna start applying for jobs. But for now, I really gotta finish this course, I gotta build some projects, I gotta get really good at React, and only then will I start applying for jobs. Well, here's the bottom line. You'll never be ready. You'll never reach a point where you're like, man, I know React so good, everybody's gonna wanna hire me. You'll never reach that point. Sites like Udemy, YouTube, are all means to learn new skills and technology along the way. Just be sure it doesn't become an actual hindrance to meeting your larger goals instead of a supplement along the way. Number three, build stuff 
from scratch. Now, you may have heard all of this advice before, but let me tell you, this is the thing that will take you to the new level. Let me give you an example. This year, I had to learn C Sharp and .NET for my job. Never worked in C Sharp, always worked with the dynamic languages, not these statically typed languages. So I did some tutorials and I learned a little bit about it, but I didn't feel like I was ready to work on something in a professional environment. And I got sick of doing tutorials. So here's what happened. I came across this article. It was uh, an article for a Bible memory program. And it had all this logic to it that was kind of appealing. So it said, you're going to take a verse, you're going to study, you're going to look at it every day for one week. Then the next week, you're going to look at it every day for one week. And then the next week, you're going to look at it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The following two weeks, Tuesday, Thursday only. The following two weeks, Saturday only. The following two weeks, once a month. And the following two weeks, once every three months, I think it was. Anyway, while, this, while these things are progressing through these different uh, time frames, new verses are being added every week. And so this guy had like an, uh, you know, index cards and a little index card box. Like nobody does that anymore. So I saw it and I was like, hey, that's, that's kind of interesting. What if I made this into an app? So I said, that would be, that would be good. I, that'd be a good way to learn C Sharp and learn .NET for me to put this logic into its own app. And to add to that, why don't I make it so it, it integrates with Twilio and texts you the verse every day? So that's what I did. And let me tell you, I wrestled with it. I, I did what I knew. I got to a certain point and all of a sudden, you know, I get a threading error or I get some kind of database error. And, and it was all of these issues that I kind of glossed over when I was learning it. I actually had to now dig in and figure out how to fix it. So it took me like three, four weeks of hard work. But all of those topics that I found hard about C Sharp, I came out of this with a good grasp of. And because of that, I felt way more confident working in C-sharp and .NET because I built something from scratch. I didn't follow along with some tutorial. Built something from scratch and wrestled with it and had to learn these core concepts because of the errors that would come up along the way. So let me tell you, I'm going to link below to an article that has a, a number of app ideas of stuff you can build this year. Take some time, take a break from the learning and build something and then learn along the way how you can fix all of these things that pop up while you're building it. In fact, aim this year to be more of a creator than a consumer. All right, number four, start teaching what you're learning. Now, I don't mean you gotta go give talks. I don't mean you gotta go teach at the college or something like that. I mean simply start a blog or start a YouTube channel. For me, this was a huge step and has been a great source of learning for me and becoming a better developer by taking things that I'm learning and then teaching it via a blog post or YouTube channel. It helps to solidify the concepts. For instance, if I just learned about JavaScript promises and I really dug deep on them, I would then go to my blog or my YouTube channel and I would teach it or I would write about it. Here's what promises are, here's how they work, here's some examples. And because of that, I would understand them deeper because I had to teach them. It also becomes a good resource for you when you kind of forget something and, and have a question about something that you've written about. You can just go to your blog and reference it. It's a great resource for you and for all the other readers that you have. So in 2020, start a blog or start a YouTube channel. Teach what you learn. You will thank me for it. And I'll put some links below to some hosting services that I recommend and things like that. Just be sure to look below. Finally, find confidence in your current skill set. This was one of my biggest lessons learned last year. Now look, I'm not a senior developer. I'm nowhere close. Thus it follows that I shouldn't act like one. I shouldn't be around senior developers acting like I'm one. And I shouldn't be going to Udemy and cramming, you know, cramming and cramming and cramming, trying to become one in six months. It just won't happen. Why? Because it takes experience and it takes time to become a senior developer. That's just the breaks. You can't become one overnight. So stop feeling bummed out when you don't know as much as these people. You see this developer talking all these big things, being able to hang with any concept, and you're like, I don't know what that is. Stop getting bummed out for it. You're not at that level yet. And stop cramming day in and day out because it's not gonna get you there either quickly. But of course, continue to grow. But what I'm saying is enjoy the journey along the way. Be confident in how much you've learned and where you're at in that journey and enjoy it knowing that you'll gain the experience along the way. Those are my five tips. That's all I have for you today. I wish you the best 2020, and I hope these 
five tips help you keep moving forward and be successful in 2020. Again, subscribe to the channel. I got lots of great things planned this year for you.